Good morning, everyone. Before starting the presentation, I would like to start by introducing myself. My name is Malik Muhammad Adil. I belong to a small village of Kalar Kahar in the district of Chakwal. I completed my initial education from Karachi, where my parents were working as an educationist. I completed my BSc Medical Technology from Basic Medical Science Institute, JPMC Karachi, and my medical school from Shifa College of Medicine. I moved to US in 2011 and joined Professor Adnan Qureshi as a research fellow at University of Minnesota. I completed my neurology residency from Oshner Clinic Foundation in New Orleans, Louisiana. I further pursued my fellowship in vascular neurology at NIH. Currently, I am an assistant professor of neurology at John Hopkins University School of Medicine. I'm also a faculty and site director of vascular neurology fellowship at NIH. I have a grant from NIH and my research interest is in acute ischemic stroke with a specific focus on patients with unknown onset and minor stroke. In addition to this, I am a disease specific reviewer for the Joint Commission. It is a great honor for me to present Professor Akhtar Ahmed lecture at 14th Annual Neurology Research Day at my very own Shifa College of Medicine, where I did my medical school. Sorry about the delay. I would like to say a few words about uh, Professor Akhtar Ahmed uh, for the audience who don't know him. Professor Akhtar completed medical school from Dow Medical College in 1957. He was the member of Royal College of Physicians in Edinburgh. He was the in charge and neurologist to the Mental Retardation Project, Jinnah Postgraduate Medical College, Karachi, from 1964 to 1970. He completed his research fellowship on the study of mental retardation from USA. He established the Department of Neurology uh, in 1971, which was later recognized uh, for training of FCPS in neurology. He was the vice president Dow Medical College from 1986 to 1997. He was the president of Pakistan Academy of Neurological Sciences from 1992 to 1994. He was the dean faculty of neurology CPSP in 1999 and remain at this position until his retirement. During his career, he holds the multiple academic appointments throughout the country and conducted multiple research projects in neurosciences. He's one of the pioneer in the field of neurology who has changed the landscape of neurology in Pakistan. History of neurology in Pakistan is incomplete without mentioning him. I do not have any financial um, or other relationship to disclose for this presentation. All my research is supported by NINDS NIH. I would like to start by sharing a few things that I least enjoyed when I was a student. I hate to see my father pay big uh, tuition checks. Once my father said to me that beta number achhe nahi aaye, to next fees khud bharoge. And I started seeing myself doing dishes and selling chana chart outside Shiva College of Medicine, but thank God I, I did fine. And another thing I didn't like was to be in the class at 8 a.m. sharp. I missed quite a few classes uh, by one or two minutes and the, class, and the class door would be closed. Believe me, I hardly met the minimum attendance requirement to sit in the final exam, but I made it. Another nightmare was oral viva exam, very famous in Shiva College of Medicine. Oh my God, what a trauma. Let's not, let's not talk about it. <laughs> Another least uh, uh, enjoyable thing was being pinned by attendings. And I was like, kill me, man. And lastly, uh, I really hated uh, doing research and thought that it is just a waste of time. I was absolutely wrong. I wanted to tell you all that uh, wherever I am right now, it is all because of research. It has completely changed, me, changed my way of thinking. And I'm a very different person with a more innovative approach. So there are many reasons for participating in research. Uh, I will touch upon a few important and the rest I will leave um, up to you to discover your own reason, reasons based on um, your area of interest and future goals. One of the most important reason is that research data gives you a convincing language. Data speaks. People will take what you have to say more seriously when they can tell you are informed. 
doing research gives you a solid foundation on which you can build your ideas and opinions. You can speak with confidence about what you know is accurate. When you have done the research, it's much harder for someone to poke holes in what you are saying. Your research should be focused on the best sources. If, you're, if your research consists of opinions from non-experts, you, you won't be very credible. Secondly, research introduces you to new ideas. You may already have opinion and ideas about the topic when you start researching. The more you research, the more viewpoints you will come across. This encourages you to entertain new ideas and perhaps take a closer look at yours. You might change your mind about something or at least figure out how to position your ideas as the best one. Believe me, these new ideas can change the entire landscape of your career. Research also improves your understanding of uh, evidence-based medicine. It helps you critically evaluate the literature, discuss important research findings uh, with your colleagues, and more importantly, communicate new research findings to your patients. I have also observed that research increases your competitiveness for a training program. If you have a research experience, it will get you in a bigger program and you will have an opportunity to work with experts in the field. I have experienced it at NIH and John Hopkins. Let's talk about a few more important uh, reasons to participate in research. Uh, research contributes to the development of new uh, medical treatments. Clinical research is the neck of the scientific bottle through which all basic biomedical research discoveries must pass if they are to be transformed into cures, treatments, and prevention in public health strategies. Literature suggests that research training and experience provides tools for a successful career. People who made this world a better place to live are the researchers by their continuous thinking and innovations. Research also helps us success in business, a very important aspect of research. It describes a concept of how you build industry and country excel. Research benefits uh, business. Many successful companies, such as those producing cons uh, consumer goods or a mass market items, uh, invest in research and development. In addition, research and development is essential to support a country economy. Pakistan needs this. You will, you will get significant recognition if you do research. And in this way, you will inspire and motivate people and eventually pay it forward. The most important reason, in my opinion, to participate in reason is that patient needs our help. Patients needs our help. One million people or a 15% of the world's uh, population uh, experiences some from uh, disability and disability, disability prevalence is higher for developing countries. One fifth, one fifth of the estimated global total or a between 110 million and 190 million people experience significant disabilities. There is a lot of work that needs to be done here and we all have the responsibility to do it. Uh, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how uh, I started uh, research and perhaps uh, this will be helpful for the medical students and trainees. Um, I would tell you all, um, if I can do research, uh, uh, anyone can do it. Uh, the story starts when I was doing my uh, BSc medical technology at uh, BMSI JPMC Karachi. Uh, I met Dr. Sayed Abdul Majid, head of the JPMC uh, blood bank a man behind the gun, great human being, and a teacher. Um, he had received the President's uh, Pride of Performance Award uh, for his outstanding services in the field of medicine in 2008. Uh, during my undergrad, uh, I came to know that the prevalence of hepatitis C virus infection uh, is high in the general population in Pakistan, ranging from 2% to 6%. Reuse of injection equipments uh, in the absence of sterilization is common, particularly in healthcare facilities that serves low-income population. 
this was a shocking information for me. And I started thinking about how to explore this topic and create awareness. Curiosity was, was um, at its peak. I can, I can clearly trace my roots uh, of becoming a researcher to the time I walked uh, into the office of uh, Dr. Sayyid Abdul Majid. I walked in with my unpolished and vague ideas of research. He sat with me and brainstormed with, with me on my ideas. We decided to do a project uh, to evaluate the resale of used syringes. We followed the course of used syringes from their initial use to their final destination. We also decided to evaluate clinical laboratory in Pakistan for adherence to standard precautions using an uh, observational uh, checklist. Uh, we found that among 44 laboratories, gloves were used in two, protective gowns in 12, disinfectants in seven, and an insurator in seven. Standard workers or st standard work uh, safety precautions were not uh, followed in major clinical laboratories in Pakistan. We also found that syringes recycling occurs primarily in the plastic wear industry in Pakistan, but some used syringes are cleaned and sold again um, as a new. Individuals who handle used syringes as well as patients who buy recycled syringes are at high risk of infection and blood-borne pathogens. Eventually, these uh, two simple observations led us to a publication uh, led us to publish two manuscripts in an international journal of infection control and hospital epidemiology. After this, uh, uh, after this really, I will tell you, I got addicted and the rest is history. I have published more than 100 papers with more, hundred, more than uh, 1,500 citations to date. Uh, after that, uh, I continued doing research um, uh, kept uh, answering very simple questions uh, and thinking of a new ideas. Here is my quick review on road to research career, uh, Shifa College of Medicine to NIH and John Hopkins University School of Medicine. I am just sharing this to motivate my juniors that if I can do it, you can do it, and I'm happy to help. I was able to earn 26 publications during my medical studies at Shifa College of Medicine. I published with almost all my attendings. All I did is show up in their offices and everyone was ready. Uh, please think of a simple question and walk into the office of your attending at your school and be persistent uh, and you will find, find your way. When I moved to US, uh, I had an opportunity to work at University of Florida. Uh, this was a basic sciences uh, experience. Later, I joined Dr. Adnan Qureshi uh, at Zenat Qureshi Stroke Institute at the University of Minnesota. Professor Adnan Qureshi is a world-renowned interventional neurologist and a researcher with a, more than 700 uh, publications and multiple national and international grants. He introduced me to the large national and international databases. This experience clearly boosted my research career. It took me to a different level, and I was able to secure a neurology residency position because, just because of uh, this experience. In addition, I started writing to different experts in the field and started collaborating with other institutions. I did this completely on my own and developed a great collaborative environment. I would encourage you to write to the people who are working on the topic of your interest and explore. Believe me, they are waiting for you. I repeat myself, believe me, they are waiting for you. I continued research at Oshner where I did my neurology residency. Due to my research experience, I was selected as an editorial board member of Neurology, which is an official journal of American Academy of Neurology. It is the top journal, top neurology journal with impact factor of 8.05. Just because of my research experience, I was also selected for the Enhanced Resident Leadership Program. The Enhanced Resident Leadership Program for adult and pediatric neurologists is designed to identify train and, and, and nurture a highly selected group of residents in adult neurology and child neurology who have the motivation, drive, and potential to be, uh, to be future academic leaders. The only reason I'm mentioning this is to emphasize that how research enhances my career and it took it, took it to the next level. By the, by, by the end of the day, my research experience 
helped me to get into the NIH fellowship and helped me secure an attractive grant and a faculty, faculty appointment. I have, I have no doubt in saying that my dream becoming an assistant professor of uh, neurology at John Hopkins University School of Medicine comes true uh, due to my research experience. Uh, I wanted to talk about a few common misconceptions that um, I felt during my research career, uh, and I'm hoping to uh, clear these uh, uh, from your minds. Uh, this, will, uh, this will come to your mind very often that research is only for smart people. I disagree. Uh, I can give my example where I can give, give many other examples where an average student made a significant changes in the field of science. Um, another, another misconception is that uh, we need laboratory to conduct uh, research. Uh, you can do research by just collecting a simple data, just a simple data from your, from your class, from your school, from your community. A lot of things uh, are happening around you and you can, you can explore those things uh, to help others. Furthermore, uh, the perception that you need a grant, you need a money for your initial uh, research career is not true. I want to tell you uh, that my first 30 publications uh, did not require a single penny. I, I would encourage you to use public databases and other resources to start your research career. Another very common misconception is that it is hard to find a mentor. Uh, but believe me, uh, it's hard if you don't look around. You, you just have to look around and you'll find one at your institution. You will hear that research is a waste of time. I think my previous slides pretty much refute this misconception. A lot of students tell me that research is boring also. I tell them, choose the topic of your interest uh, and you will, you will love it. Next slide. Um, so when I started doing research, uh, the question always um, come to my mind that how can I answer the important scientific questions uh, without having any grant? And how can I publish in a high impact journal? During my research career, I discovered that if your idea or a question is unique, you can answer the question by using simple databases and still publish in high impact journals and contribute to the science. Here are a few examples uh, that I would like to share with you all. Six of our publications were cited in guidelines or scientific statements. In most of our publication, we use administrative databases, which is not a very, very famous in the scientific community to answer our uh, unique, uh, unique questions. In this slide, you, you see three of our publication listed were cited in scientific statement from the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association. Here is another example where our paper was cited uh, in the scientific statement um, from the American Heart Association and American Stroke uh, Association. Here is another example where our paper um, was cited in American Headache Society uh, Systemic Review uh, and evidence-based guideline. This was, this was uh, the title of this uh, study was incidence of unruptured intracranial aneurysm and subarachnoid hemorrhage result of a statewide, uh, statewide study. It is another paper, uh, acute renal failure is associated with, uh, with higher death and disability in patients with acute ischemic stroke was cited in consensus report of the acute disease uh, Quality Initiative 21 work group. I guess the bottom line is that if the question is unique, and even if you use administrator or a claims database to answer your question, it will create an impact and will serve in the advancements of the field. If nothing, if nothing, at least this will give you an encouragement that you thought of this first. I repeat that if, if nothing, at least this will give you an encouragement that you, you thought of this question first. Okay, as I, as I mentioned earlier, whether you apply for nursing school, medical school, uh, residency or fellowship, 
Research increases your competitiveness for training program, and it is one of the most important factor in selection. In addition to this, for international medical graduate applicants, research increases the chances of getting into a training program. As you can see in the par bar chart, that mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications were highest in international medical graduate group. I myself experienced the same when I was applying for neurology residency. In my first, um, first match, I was able to secure only few interviews and did not match. Later, um, after doing a research for a couple of years, I was able to secure 17 interviews despite being an old graduate. Clearly, clearly research helped me at every step of my career and made it to NIH and John Hopkins. This is another data suggesting that uh, with, uh, with, with other important factors, research is one of the key factors uh, that help you get into a good program. I would like to take this opportunity to comment on interpersonal skills. As you see, it's the top factor when it comes to applicant selection. The ACGME surveys are reporting that international medical graduates score low for this factor, and it is the common reason to not, to not be selected despite having a good scores and outstanding CV. I would highly encourage to work and work on interpersonal skills throughout your career. Simply, it is important, it is very important and can be a big hurdle in your career. Here is another data demonstrating how important research is to get into the uh, competitive uh, 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 training programs. As we all know, neurosurgery, thoracic surgery, plastic surgery, uh, orthopedic surgery, and dermatology are the competitive programs. Program directors selected the candidates who demonstrated the involvement and interest in research. Clearly, the rating was highest among competitive training programs. And if you have a research experience, it will get you in, in a bigger program and you will have an opportunity to work with experts in the field. I would like to uh, share some research opportunities at NIS that you can explore. It includes summer internship, NIS post -bac program, medical research scholar program, and clinical electives. I will talk briefly about these opportunities in next few slides. Okay, let's talk about summer internship program. So summer internship program is designed uh, to provide an opportunity to spend a summer working with a talented scientist. Summer interns at the NIH include high school students who are at least 17 years of age, college students and individuals who will be starting college in the fall, graduate students, that is uh, individuals working towards a PhD or a master's degree, and a professional school, medical, dental, pharmacy, or other, uh, other professional schools. It is an eight to 12 weeks program, which includes some monthly stipend, a great opportunity to explore and avail during your career. NIS post -bac program provides you with a full-time biomedical research experience. It is our hope that many of you will decide to include research as an important component of your future career. And we hope you will all leave with a deep understanding of how scientific investigation works and what it entails. Although research should be your first priority during uh, your stay at NIH, NIH encourages you to find the time to participate in career development activities and reach out to the community around you. It is one to two year program, which includes which include um, some monthly stipend. This is another opportunity to explore. The Medical Research Scholar Program is, uh, is a year long research program uh, for future clini clinician scientists that advances health by inspiring um, careers in biomedical research. By engaging students in basic clinical or translational research investigations, um, offering a curriculum rich in didactics um, and professional development, and fe featuring a robust mentorship and uh, advising program, 
a medical research scholar program prepares, prepares its scholars to become tomorrow's leader in the medicine and biomedical research. It is a one-year program again, and a medical student uh, can apply in their uh, third or fourth year of medical school. Okay. To, uh, to further its mission to train the next generation of physician scientists and clinician, uh, clinical investigators, the NIH Clinical Center, uh, through the Office of Clinical Research Training and Medical Education, offers a short four to 12 weeks uh, uh, clinical, or, uh, clinical oriented uh, rotations in the clinical electives program domestic or international senior level medical or dental students uh, can apply. The focus of this program is to enhance the training experience for highly motivated students who are strongly interested in uh, or committed to research oriented careers uh, in academic medicine. Let's talk about a career in research. Finding a mentor is one of the key steps uh, in pursuing your career in research. Mentoring is a professional activity, a trusted relationship, and a meaningful commitment. The ultimate goal of the mentor is to establish the uh, trainee as an independent researcher. A number of studies suggested that outstanding mentorship is directly associated with trainee's success and become an independent researcher. On the other hand, studies have also suggested that a dearth of experienced uh, mentors is one of the common reason not to pursue a career in research. Let me give you a, a few tips on how to find a mentor, as it is one of the important, uh, important thing when you pursue your uh, career in research. First, do a preliminary brainstorming on your, uh, on your area of research interest. Do a search of a campus website to identify a faculty working in your area of interest. Read faculty research description and generate a ranked list of potential mentors. Identify at least one, at least one thing about each person's research that, that is interesting to you and that you would like to know more about. Talk to, the, talk to friends who are already uh, doing research to get their advice uh, uh, about potential uh, mentors. It is, it's always good to communicate via email. Keep it short and to the point. They are busy people, believe me. Uh, these, are, these are very busy people. Address the email using the mentor's official title, specifically refer to the mentor's research and what you find inter interesting about it. Use your own words and don't copy text from the research description on their website. I repeat myself again. Use your own words and don't copy text from the research description on their website. Be clear that you are looking for a research experience versus a dishwashing job. And, and what's your main goal will be? Example, shadowing someone in the lab to get exposed to research versus doing an doing a honor thesis research project. So highlight what you have to offer, what distinguishes you from other students, show enthusiasm for learning how to do research. Finally, request that if, uh, if the mentor is not able to take a researcher, uh, that he or she recommend a, a, a colleague uh, who might be able to, uh, able to help you. These are the basic points, uh, uh, but, but were very helpful at least for me. Okay, so there are many reasons of why one should consider a career in clinical research, and a few important ones uh, include, um, I, I already discussed this briefly in my previous slides, but um, one more time, quickly, a couple of important, uh, important, important things. Physicians are needed to translate basic sciences discoveries into uh, medical therapies and take it to the bedside. Research contributes to the development of new medical treatment. Research also improves your understanding of evidence-based medicine. It helps you critically evaluate the literature, discuss important research findings with your colleagues, and more importantly, communicate new research findings to your patients. And, and finally, research helps validate 
the principles and practices. Another uh, important aspect, uh, reason to pursue a career in research is that our patient needs help. Neurological disorders are the leading cause of disability and the second leading cause of death worldwide. In the past 30 years, the absolute number of deaths and people with disability owing to neurological diseases uh, have, have risen substantially, particularly uh, in low income and middle income. Um, countries and further uh, increases further increases are expected globally as a result of a population growth and aging. Clearly, uh, work needs to be done here, and we all we all have the we all have the responsibility to address this uh, big issue. There are there are a number of studies which looked at uh, research and career enhancement. This is one of the study which looks at the effect of a medical student. Uh, research experience on career choice. Uh, students who completed the research internship after first or second year of medical school were included in the research survey. Two groups were compared and divided based on the number of years after fellowship. Uh, results of the study showed that research experience influence, influenced the overall career path of the participants. Research was an important factor in being selected for residency program. It made them more likely to pursue career in research and academic medicine. And lastly, it was a, it was a positive influence on their professional activities uh, throughout their career. So more research, another research compares the impact of a medical, a medical student research training on academic career. Awardees of NIH, medical, student research program were compared with non-awardees. Research concluded that awardees had a higher rate of research awards and faculty appointments with, with research responsibilities. It is obvious from multiple studies that exposure to research at the early stage of your training clearly help trainee pursuing a career in research. Let me briefly talk about the nature of work as a clinical researcher. This is, this is a bigger topic and I will briefly touch upon it to save some time for questions. Nature of work for clinical researchers can, can range from doing simple surveys to the development of a new medical therapies by conducting clinical trials. It really depends in which institution and which part of the world you're working in. Nature of clinical research work includes prevention and control of disease, identifying the determinants of disease, disability, and other epidemiological health outcomes, and, and research human disease to decrease the disability and ultimately improve the quality of life. Again, the topic is very uh, diverse and has a multiple dimensions. So, uh, working conditions can be overwhelming if you don't manage your work-life balance. You will be seeing patients will be on call, teaching trainees, attending meetings, writing grants and papers, participating on um, advisory and uh, editorial boards and family commitments. All this can be challenging. Organization and management skills are the key factors if you want to become a leader in the field. It is a very, it is a very demanding and competitive field. There are a number of schedules that you can choose from based on your requirements. I will tell you one thing that doing research and publishing is an addiction and, and you will be in the never ending cycle. So take a baby steps and make small promises uh, that you can fulfill that you can fulfill and meet the deadlines. Uh, please, please do not kill yourself. Life is beautiful and spend time with your family and friends too. Maybe, maybe I should start taking my own advice and this will make my family happy too. <laughs> okay. If you choose your career in research, uh, you will have a multiple sectors where you can work and take the field to the next level. Majority of people work in academic or semi-academic hospital settings, uh, government department, which is not a very uh, enjoyable, uh, enjoyable thing. Uh, the emerging sectors are research and development and pharmaceutical industry. 
research and development and a pharmaceutical industry uh, also help us uh, succeed in business. Very important aspect um, of research. Uh, it describes a, a concept of how you build industry and how, um, how a country excel. Uh, many successful companies, in, companies invest in research and development, which is essential, uh, which is essential to supporting um, a country economy. Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan clearly needs this. Okay, let's talk briefly about research job outlook. Employment of medical scientists is projected to grow uh, approximately 6% from 2019 to 2029. This is the, this is the projected percentage. Uh, faster, than, uh, faster than the average for all occupations. A larger and aging population, increased rate of several chronic conditions, and a, and a growing reliance on pharmaceuticals are all factors that are expected to increase demand for medical scientists. In addition, frontiers in medical research are expected to require the, the services of medical scientists. Medical scientists will continue to be need, needed because they, can, they contribute to the development of treatments um, and medicines that improve human health. Um, I clearly think that the future is bright. Now, the conclusion is, uh, listen to your mother, stay in a school and don't do drugs. <laughs> now, last two, two things, I really wanted to focus on this. Think about doing research, even if you are not planning to pursue research as a career, it will open your doors. Let me repeat this. Think about doing research, even if you are not planning to pursue research as a career, it will open many doors. And the last thing, very important, please pay attention. It's true that some research is better than none at all, but poor research or conclusions applied in ineffective, ineffectively can cause great harm. Keep that in mind too. I'll read it one more time. It's true that some research is better than none at all. But poor research or conclusions applied ineffectively can cause great harm. Keep that in mind too, please. Uh, by this, again, uh, thank you so much once again for inviting me. It is an honor. Uh, I am happy to take questions now. Thank you so much. Thank you.